Hi there, and welcome to How China Works. My name is Brendan Davis, and my co-host Ying Ying Lee will be with us in just a minute with this week's interview. Pardon my raspy voice. Part of why I was sadly not able to join Ying Ying for this interview with Meng Fei Li, who I also know from Beijing and was excited to talk with, is that because of my work with uh, producing and developing things, of course, film productions are pretty much shut down most places. But there's a lot of development work, and that means a lot of talking. So I am pretty hoarse, as you can tell. I'm not sick. But I really especially wish that I could have been on this conversation. This is a really good one. There was a quote that is a paraphrase and requote of something that is pretty timeless that Mengfei says that I had to write down, which was at a certain point he says, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. And he was referring specifically to the people, in my opinion, and we share this opinion, misguided people uh, protesting the stay-at-home orders in the states with automatic weapons and state capitals and such. But I, I think that this applies to a lot of things, and this has been a, a ruling principle for my life. We are joined, as I said, by this ever insightful guest of ours, um, Meng Fei Li has a lot of perspective. He was an international journalist. He moved to the U.S. in 2005, lived here 13 years. He's got a lot of love for the United States, where I am now, so I'm speaking in that tense. But Meng Fei also has the clarity of someone who is professionally trained to be a detached observer through journalism, and this has led him to many insights, as that process does, and we're glad to share them with you, a few of them. Among other things, Inging and Monfei today discuss how political reactions affected the spread of COVID-19 in different countries, the near-term futures we can anticipate based on choices we make now, the power of engaged citizenship, and perhaps most provocatively, but very effectively, actually pretty early in the show, and this is expanded upon, as we go, the meaning of the word freedom. What does it actually mean to have freedom? I'm going to cross-post this episode on Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom, my other original Beijing-based podcast that's really trying to focus. I want this to reach as wide an audience as possible. Please don't forget to share the show with people you think would enjoy it. You can subscribe in the podcatcher of your choice. But whatever you do, we really hope you enjoy this conversation with Meng Fei Lei. This is Xin Ying Li, your co-host. Today, our cross-cultural guest is Meng Fei Li. Meng Fei, how are you doing today? Oh, Ying Ying, how are you? I'm doing great. So you're in Beijing currently, right? Yes, I am. I am. You know, I was born and raised in Beijing, so hey, this is my home. <laughs> okay. So I would like to ask you a very basic question. First of all, how are you feeling now regarding what's going on with the COVID-19? And you lived in the uh, United States for 13 years and have lots to say about the current state over there. So how are you doing and uh, what do you feel about it so far? Well, Ying Ying, that's a really good question. I would say the entire globe is undergoing this unexpected virus outbreak and as someone that who used to live in America and move back to China and during this critical moment, I will say, you know, on one hand, it's such a shame and also it's a pity that we're going through this tragic stage. But meanwhile, personally, I have to say I'm being grateful for this time. I'm able to really take a step back from this chaotic and business on the daily basis. But meanwhile, able to spend some quality time with my families. And also, most importantly, is really get a chance to sit down to reflect a bunch of ongoing matters across the continent or across the globe. So overall, I'm pretty um, cheerful and upbeat. And yeah, it's a good time to take a break. But meanwhile, absolutely, it's a good opportunity to reflect on so many things. Yeah, that's why we brought you here. And we know that you have lots of thoughts on the current state and you have a great uh, concern for the humanity and for this news industry and for many, many important and interesting and things around the world right now. So what is the current political trend in the United States today in your eyes? Well, number one, I believe, as you know, Donald Trump is still the president. 
And this year has become a very critical moment for this nation because in a few months, the U.S. is going to face another major election. Now, with that said, uh, the, the most important question on everyone's mind is, will Donald Trump continue to be the president for the next four years? And on the left, we have Joe Biden. Joe Biden right now has be officially become the nominee for the Democratic Party. And people are wondering, where is that in China? You know, because we know since Donald Trump started this campaign four years ago or five years ago that China, this name has been popping back and forth in and out of the trade war. Now, if President Trump will be replaced by Joe Biden, does that mean the relationship between U.S. and China is going to change? And that's number one. The number two things, as you know, Ying, that you travel extensively is Today's world is not just about China. It's not just about uh, the United States of America. It's about the entire world. And from all the knowledge information that I'm looking at right now, I believe there are two characteristics are so important in terms of understanding today's America's political movement. And number one is the quality of the leader. And number two is the virtues of the citizens. And I believe now is the time that we need to really take a deeper look to use those two quality, uh, use those two characteristics to take a closer examination about to wonder or to even ask the question, not where China is going, not where America is going. It's, it's let's ask the question is where the world is heading next after this pandemic, after this COVID-19. Probably those are the trillion dollar questions over here. And I like how you frame that into two biggest characteristics. At, it's like pointing some directions for us to think at this point. So under, of course, this word, the leadership, we have seen tremendous, tremendous discussion, right? On what make a leader, a leader, right? At this point. So Let's talk about a little bit on um, how China, uh, how America today, that is ref defining the meaning of this word, uh, freedom. We see a lot, we see it a lot happening, you know, in news network talking about how leaders to be able to provide this freedom uh, in the United States in order to contain the virus. And uh, that's something that I'm very interested in looking at at this point. We see that people right now under the leadership of Trump, there's a lot of discussion on what it is freedom. So what's your opinion on that? Well, Yingying, that's a really good question. Now, before we talk about or before we can define the meaning of freedom. One thing we need to understand is we need to talk about the Constitution of the United States of America. Recently, I finished reading a book. The book is called How to Read the Constitution and Why. Now, after living in this country for 13 years and talk to the experts and travel extensively in terms of understanding this political movement and especially center on the round center on, on the word of freedom i have to say that today from my perspective americans today really don't understand the word freedom as a matter of fact the word freedom the meaning of freedom has become so ambiguous more and more because in the constitution you know that people always say the first amendment that says the citizens of the United States have the rights of assemble, the rights of freedom of speech, the, uh, the freedom of religion. You know, you put all this together. It is so easy that we can say I am allowed to do something because the Constitution protects me or I have the such freedom or I have the free will to choose because the Constitution guarantees. However, Ying Ying, that's not the case. Because today, as, as, as we are seeing or watching the news, 
in America a couple couple days ago or even a couple weeks ago, people are holding rallies and protests because the group of people they don't like the so-called strict lockdown. And they don't appreciate what is needs to be done in order to uh, to protect and to save lives. And so these people in America are saying, no, no, you are violating my rights because you're 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 taking away my freedom. And uh, again, as someone who lived there for so long and studied this political theories and studied this political movement, I want to say is today Americans are so confused between what I should do and what I can do. You're right. The Constitution indeed guarantees the freedom to some extent, but this is a special circumstance and the entire globe, not only in America, but also again around the world, we're facing this battle as something we have never seen before. So people are saying, oh, because I don't like it. So that's why I called it the freedom violation, because I'm not comfortable. I cannot go back to the normal life in America. That's why I want to protest. I want to be against the, uh, the government. Well, Seriously, guys, it's not about you. It's not about what you want. It's all about what you should. Mm -hmm. So coming back to your question is the word freedom today has been tossed everywhere. And the freedom, the meaning of freedom the, has decreased drastically. And of course, with that said, is has a lot to do with the current leadership in America today. Yeah, you kind of touch a little bit about the next, uh, the following question that I'm going to ask. Why did this happen, in your opinion? And what happened to make this a reality right now? Well, Ying, that's a really good question. Again, if I can pick up where I left, it's, mm -hmm. it has a lot to do with the leadership today. People complained or you know, in America, they have two systems, Democratic, Republican, you know, today, or you have more independent or undecided voters and however, however you want to call it. How America has come to who they are today or who it is today, it is crucial that we need to understand people follow leaders. I mean, this has been the tradition or this has been the routine since, you know, Adam and Eve, because when, when, when we are in the midst of the chaos, or we, when we are um, struggling with this such unexpected or unprecedented disaster, the first reaction or the human instinct is to look up for someone, is to look for someone to provide a solutions. And I have to say that current American Trump administration has not clearly defined or has not clearly set the guidelines it's simply because we don't play by the rules. And I guess that could be something positive or something negative for Trump. So I would say if you look at the, uh, uh, the um, press conference or if you look at the Twitter, if you look at all the news that cover about President Trump, again, I was a journalist. So I understand there is a biased opinions in the news. However, if you stick to the facts – and I would say it's not shocking to me that why Americans today are behaving this way is simply because the leadership has not been transparent and has not been consistent with the messages. And that, with that said, I believe China on, on this side, or especially during this special circumstances, has done amazing job, period. And certainly ever since the outbreak, we and here um, on how China works, we discussed many, many times how we feel here in China, how we authentically feel those whether or not those restrictions and those measures work. And this world right now has many chaotic voices, but among them must be one, one voice that is science, that's fact, whether or not it works. So Talking about the leadership in the United States, we cannot actually, we cannot do without talking about how it deal with China at this point, with new cent centric on the U.S.-China relationship. So what is the modern blame game? As probably our audience already can feel, without 
us mentioning it actually. So who is the winning side? Well, Yingying, that's a another good question. I want to say today, there is no winner because we are in the age of 2020. In order to for us to work together effectively, we need to get rid of this old mindset. We need to get rid of this blame game. Again, if something happens, we can't just go back to the routine that we need to find out who started this war or who started this argument. Again, just like you're educating a, ch a child, educating the children in school, it's when something bad happens. Is we need to collaboratively working together to find the solution. It's not to find the scapegoat. It's not to find someone who can take the blame because it's such a waste of time. So again, this pandemic has caused a drastic economic decrease and economic、uh, deficit, not just for a, a U.S., not just for、um, Sweden or Germany, for China. It's everyone in this together. So I will say today, under these special circumstances in 2020, we can no longer just say who is the winner, who is the loser. The right way to look at the perspective is how we are supposed to work together to fight this together or to fight against this virus together. Remember, it's not the people; it's the virus that made us who we are today. Because we are locked at home, because we couldn't go out, because we can't enjoy the life that we used to have. It's not about the people; it's the virus.、Mm -hmm. So again, I would say, no one is winning in this. Only because we can work together, we are going to win this battle together.、Mm -hmm. So, Monfei, I'm sure, I'm sure people who started the blaming game, you know, have been hearing this all the news, all media, everywhere, online, offline. So, if you have chances, if you have chances in facing them, right, the people who. Either politician or media or anyone, any authority, one, any authority, anyone who have influence and power to start and continue the blame game. What would you say as the sharpen words to them in order to change that? That's that's、It's、more a like awaken, awakening call, something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's not you know. It's not easy just talk to the politicians. You know.、Um, <laughs> But I believe if I had the privilege, or if I had the opportunity to sit down with the governmental officials, you know, regardless where they're from, and of course that with the leaders and across the world, I would say, number one, stop all the blames, stop all the games, okay? And again, a couple of days ago, I was watching an interview about uh, 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 from Bill Gates. Bill Gates, we know that he is. Uh, such an expert on this,、uh, um, the movement or what they call this initiatives to to、uh, fight against this pandemic, you know. And the second thing is he's a well known as a founder of Microsoft, and also he's a philanthropist. I like really what he said. He said is we need to work together again. We need to take a closer look to understand how we are supposed to help each other because the world. It's really not depending on one country. It's depending all of us. Remember, in, in, in English, there's a word called focus. And I always tell my friends, you can't spell the word focus without us. So that's how I would say it's a collaborative work. It's a cooperation. That's number one. And number two is put down the policy. Let's put humanity. Okay? Because policy regulations. That these are the things and the rules are boundaries. Of course, we need to keep them in mind. But again, let's take a step back, be tender-hearted, and be humane. Humanity first, because when you put policy regulations, and we we tend to think as you know, we have to have this winning, we have to have this winner, or we have to correct who's right, who's wrong. But in this moment, it doesn't matter. And number three is. Be the voice, you know, of global, not just local. And we're all suffering, and we're still、um, undergoing this transaction, I would say. But it is so important that we need to think globally, 
and not just think locally. Open your eyes. Like Ying Ying, you are doing this cross-cultural uh, communication for decades, and and I believe it is so important that we say how can we make the message uh, 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 more transparent or uh, straightforward so the world can understand each other, so the world can see how we are working together, and so we don't. Be the scapegoat, or we don't be uh, the uh, so-called losers at the end of the game. There's no losers anymore, and I mean every single country needs to help each other. So that's why I would say it again: is China. We have demonstrated clearly that you know how friendly we are and how positive we should be, and also in the midst of the storm and the midst of the chaos. We are now only helping ourselves and、um, uplifting our own citizens. But also, we are helping the people around the world: Spain, France, Canada, Germany. I mean, look look at the how tremendous impact that the、uh, China is creating today. And Meng Fei. So speaking of China, you must have heard that, of course, we have witnessed China either by Started early with the restrictions to contain the virus. Like yesterday, Beijing just officially declared that it, it downgraded the level of protection over here. Which means people come to Beijing will not have to stay in quarantine for fourteen days. Which is a big, big win, big, big thing for people who live in Beijing and want to come to Beijing for business, work, and life, everything. So at the same day, the numbers of infected,、uh, a virus infected in the United States passed one million. So we are not here to compare who is right, who is wrong, who did poorly, and who did well. But here is the thing: at the end of the game. We have to understand saving lives. Whatever measures should be taken, saving lives. But at the same time, you you just you just mentioned that, of course, looking at what China has done, media has been pointing out different directions in understanding this. What would you say to these comments or opinion that China is not helping? Others, but it's for its own sake, you know. For they say mass diplomacy, whatever, right? Whatever China has done has to be criticized,、uh, and, and there's、uh, always seems to be、um, a reason, you know, to 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 judge and criticize China in in this particular matter about saving lives. So, what would you say to them? Well, Ying Ying, of course, I'm very familiar with the news that you mentioned, and. As soon as I received the news alert, I was very happy. You know, Beijing is the capital city of China, and Beijing is the home for international talents. And I always hope and I pray that Beijing will continue to be the place where people are shine and people can shine and their skills can make impact or contribute to the growth of the city and also the growth, the fast development of the country. Now, with that said, under these special circumstances, one thing I want to say is obedience. We are not the expert who can deal with this pandemic. I I don't know anything about vaccines, you know, about helping people to save their lives. But as a civil citizen, again, I talk about before in the virtue of the citizens is. Learn how to help when the country is suffering, or learn how to behave when the world needs our help. And I would say to be obedient, and this is so important, Inging. Of course, right now that you know the saying, haters are always going to hate. It doesn't matter what you do. If I don't like you, I'm not going to like you a bit. I mean, you can、um, you can try to bribe me or give me a home bow for. You know, ten thousand RMB. If I don't like you, I'll take the money and I'll still say something back behind your back. So I will say right now, for China, it's not to worry about how other countries or other people are still pinpointing or even use China as a political weapon to、uh, to win an election or or even use China this topic as a strategy to get more voters. I mean, put. 
put everything away. I would say for the country, just keep doing what we should do because it's all about saving lives. You know, um, in, in America, a couple of years ago, there was a movement called um, Black Lives Matter. OK, it's, yeah. it was a trending hashtag on Twitter. And I will say right now, if China, we can start, uh, start a hashtag is all lives matter. OK, because when we come to life and death, there's no nationality differences and no one cares about what language you speak because you only get a chance to live once. So I will say right now, it's all about how could we be so obedient. So, again, we are saving lives and demonstrating this is what we should do. I know American politics today is standing at a crossroads. And of course, that um, being someone that who constantly monitoring and watching this, I have to say today's American politics are so polarized and by, uh, uh, influenced by the media. You watch the left and some of uh, the people always criticize Trump. You watch the right and people love Trump, love to worship them. But again, at this moment, there's no politics. It's all about lives. It's all about who's doing right so we begin to copy, so we can imitate, because that is a good example to work to move forward. So, of course, China, this is a country of 1.4 a billion people. And I would say Beijing as the capital of China can just got this news alert that we move or officially that – eased up the attention from level one to level two, and there's no more quarantine. You know, Yingying, that's, that's, that's a collective effort. Yeah. And, and from the cross-cultural uh, from, from cross uh, perspective or com uh, uh, communication to say is, I'm very proud of being the Chinese person. I'm not saying, you know, I, I'm not saying that the um, rest of the world should do exactly what China is doing right now because, you know, the population, the circumstances, the culture are all different. But again, the bottom line is, China is doing something right, and let's take a look at it. Again, if that if if the country say in America or Germany, you can't copy China for hundred percent, maybe thirty percent or maybe twenty percent, because again, remember a couple months ago we couldn't even go out, and we were remember I used to joke with my friends. I say because the quarantine or because the uh, um, coronavirus, enemies became friends and friends became enemies. <laughs> And it's it just way it, it is. But look how far we have come today. So I will say again, let, their hater, let, let the haters hate for China move forward. Why? Because people are people need to go back to the normal life. And as long as we can live, we can sacrifice and we're willing to do whatever we can to preserve the livelihood. Hey, Monfei, we just actually discussed a little bit about the the role of media when it comes yes. to the blade game, right? When it comes to saying whether or not China is doing right or wrong, whether or not um, Trump is doing is affecting, you know, the freedom, everything. So it has to be demonstrated through media. So what role does media today play during this pandemic? Thing, especially regarding the U.S. and China relationships, what what's your opinion on that? Well, Ying, Ying, as someone who that you know who's used to um, be in the news field and dealt a lot of work involved with media, I would say today's media has not been honest and fair, not just to China, but to a lot more countries. Remember the day. I joined my graduate school and I asked myself, I said, in the future, if I could be anyone on TV who is a famous journalist or a news anchor, who that person would be, I remember the answer I picked was someone like Anderson Cooper, someone like Matt Lauer. However, today I have to say this pandemic has really challenged media to become more transparent and more honest because from my perspective, they have not. If you turn on the news, there is so much information that are not being reported today. And it's again, it's all about picking or choosing the winners and the losers. So 
so much, yeah, so much, many facts are being ignored at this moment. So I will say, from my perspective, to look at the news media today, especially about the news outlets in America, yeah, they need to be careful, and also they really need to dig deeper. Ask the question: Is what characteristics or qualities to be a successful or to be even a fair journalist today? Mm-hmm. Because they are not actually reporting news. Instead, the news media today in America are attacking each other all because the word politics. And I am sick and tired of this. And that's, I would say, that's a word for media for. Journalists, journalists, right? I would like to say, if you have one suggestion for them besides, you know, asking them to stop police, political, pol- being politically victimized, even actually themselves, what would be a very feasible solution or feasible step they could take to reduce the influence? With that, well, first, I mean,、um, um, a lot of news reporters today they need to go back to school. Seriously, <laughs> they need to go back, to school, learn how to write and learn how to speak in front of camera. Okay, so the first thing. The second thing I would say, the word I mentioned before is humanity. Yingying, this is so important because today no one actually cares about who's winning. Who's losing in terms of politics? How can I get the credit? How much exposure, you know, and how powerful? And in this narcissism, you know, it just—it's polluting, it's contaminating the world today in terms of media. So I would say the most important lesson is remember journalists or being、uh, in the media field, you need to have this ambition or be hungry to tell the real stories. Be honest, be truthful, and don't use the platform to attack each other. Don't use the platform to to uh, uh, what, do you, what do you call the、uh, spread the illness or、uh, speak the devil of each other. I mean, I hate to see that、um, the person called uh, uh, Chris Cuomo from CNN is bashing、uh, Tucker Carlson from Fox News, or、uh, Good Morning Joe、uh, is. Attacking Jesse Waters from Fox News. I mean, guys, please stop this game. Now is not the time to say which news network can get the most rating or which news network can really get the attention of the president. No, no, it's about which news network can help people feel better about themselves or even get them get them hopes. Mm-hmm. You know, the、um, former U.S. President Woodrow Wilson one, once he said. It's not the future we're afraid. It is the future that excites and challenges us to be exactly who we are. See, that's how I would say. You know, give the normal back voices to the people. Let them understand. When I turn on the news, I can receive the good news, or I can watch the facts, so I know what's ahead of me. Not about who's winning. Not about politics anymore. And not about who's. Picking the holes from each other—that is just not right. Excellent, excellent points. There is one more I could add. If I have a chance to talk to those anchors of media arguing, just just by looking at the television and videos, we feel that they really need a break. They really need to be taken into. The mountains and the the big lines, even the desert, to feel the nature, to be in awe of nature, to feel the feel this 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 huge、uh, universe and feel the 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 innocent innocent、yes. nature. Of people go so, to so, villages in in West China or go to go into the mountains, the forest to connect with、yes. minorities. 
the people who、yes. does not know what is a blame game. The people does not know how to <laughs> set traps for other people.、That's、so I feel like it's a fabulous moment under COVID nineteen. In this twenty twenty, we should actually try something even physically to set them free and separate this the people who pointing fingers to each other. Yes, you do. And the last thing I want to say is, I used to watch Fox News, and when I was sober. So right now, after watching Fox News, I always say I wasn't an alcoholic, but after watching Fox News, I might need to go to rehab. So take my advice. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Shut the TV, shut the computer, go out and realize. Okay, there's a very cute, lovely animal. It's called. Swan or、uh, duck, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So I say, we need to stop polluting and feeding our minds with those junks, and feed them, feed ourselves with positivity. And again, the world is so big, and it's so big that it beyond what the politics and what the、uh, this whole battle and this whole war, this whole media、uh, bashing. Yeah, it just I I just can't do that anymore. So I will say, the、uh, to uh, to uh, to summarize is two points. Number one, majority of the、um, TV anchors and journalists、uh, they need to go back to school. I don't know I don't know if you need to borrow your money from the third uncle or fourth nephew <laughs> or you want to take a student loan. But the second thing is、um, maybe take a break from your work and go travel. Okay,、mm -hmm. because when you travel, you really can get a sense of hum perspective on humanity.、Mm -hmm. Humanity. First, that is so important, and respect Mother Nature. Absolutely, yes. So, two more questions. <laughs> I will let you go.、Um, sure. What What books should we read at this point in terms of gaining a better understanding of the global affairs and, of course, ourselves? Well, at this moment, Yingying, I would say there are so many books I can think of right now, but there are two books I strongly recommended. Um, all the listeners and people across the globe to check out. Number one, there is a book that I started to read. It's an amazing book. It's called American Dirt, and in this book, it talks about really the true stories of American people, and not only the family that has close relationship domestically, but also the family how they live and. Um, suffer, experience the transition with the people from the outside world. So、um, again, I'm not done with the book, but one thing I do want to mention is, if you really get into the characters and you really enjoy reading, this is that this is the book that you can't put it down because it really changes your perspective about humanity. It changes your perspective about human relations. And the second book I recommend, and I'm working、uh, reading right now, it's the book on Adolf Hitler. Now, don't get me wrong; I'm not a fan of Hitler, or I'm not、uh, uh, promoting this book or promoting this icon. I'm reading this book because it helped me to examine the inner characteristics of human being when we are at the bottom of our lives, and how this person used the inner strength and also opportunities. That he had from no one, from this underdog, became this person that the entire world was afraid at one point in this history. So yeah, those two books I really recommend、um, people to check it out. It's really about humanity and also it's about leadership. And yeah. Great, great recommendations, and already marked it down. <laughs> so, Mofei, we cannot thank you enough for sharing your valuable insights with us today. And if there's any way for our audience in the future to contact you in the future, so what would be the best way to contact you? Well, Yingying, first of all, I'm a fan of yours, so、uh, your show. So, of course, number one is they can always connect with me.、Uh, By listening to how China works, like this episode, and they were able to communicate with me,、uh, communicate with us. And the second thing is,、um, they're welcome to、uh, connect with me on WeChat, and it's very simple: is Joy Peace Triple One Three. So 
um, I'm, I, I embrace friends not only from China, but also across the globe. And last but not least, I would say just, just keep listening to how China works. And you never know. Maybe I'll be back with the second episode or it becomes a, a part of the series. Yeah, so that's we'll it. definitely have you on that. Thank you so much, Mo Fei. Yu Kong Yingying, it's my honor and privilege to be on your show. Thank you. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed listening to it. And again, if you would like to find out more about Meng Fei Li, you can check the show notes to connect with him. And I like his advice. Twice he said, please keep listening to How China Works. We will indeed have him back on as a guest. We're really pleased to keep bringing you these shows. And as things are getting back to normal in China... I believe that Inging will be able to secure even more and more interviews for us, and I will join in whenever I can. On behalf of the amazing Inging Lee, I'm Brendan Davis. Thank you very much for listening to How China Works. We hope you are staying safe and healthy and sane, and we will see you next week.